Hello, I'm Russell with Community Financials. Our business helps make self-managing HOAs and condos easier by providing monthly accounting and administration help nationwide. To further help self-managed boards, we're starting a video series called Ask an Expert. In this series, we'll pick industry experts and have them share with us some insights to help you run your community. And please note, you don't necessarily have to be a self-managed board to get uh, useful information from this series. One of the most confusing and riskiest aspects of being a community board member is insurance, specifically when it comes to insurance of vendors and contractors. To help simplify this topic, I've invited David Durango to have a conversation with us. He's been in the industry since 1982 and specializes in insurance for community associations and works with New Front Insurance Agency. David's also the co-founder of Association Services Network, which helps vendors uh, helps communities by vetting vendors and verify the contractor's license, insurance for general liability, making sure that the name the association has an additional insurer. They also verify auto liability and workers' comp coverage, and all this is done at no cost to the association. Thank you, David, for agreeing to talk with our audience today. And David, I wanted to focus on vendor and contractor insurance and the risks they pose to communities and how community boards can reduce that risk. So first, if you could tell us a little bit about, you know, vendor insurance and why it's important to uh, boards and the liability and risk that goes with that, and it's not covered by other insurance, uh, maybe a couple examples uh, to show uh, listeners what what they're talk what we're talking about. Well, thank you, Russell, and thank you for inviting me here today uh, to talk about this very important but sometimes neglected issue of uh, vetting the vendor's insurance and their licensing. Um, whenever board members and managers bring on vendors to the property, they're completely naked and exposed to the insurance coverage that they have or don't have to cover the association for any incident that they may uh, bring on to their property, any bodily injury or property damage that would occur. What we do is we make sure that they have proper insurance to, wrap, to cover them in event of a loss. We, 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 we look at their general liability coverage to make sure they name the association as additional insured, or if there's a management company involved, we would make sure the management company is additional insured too. And to get additional insured endorsement to be ratified, you have to have a written agreement in place that states that we're naming the association on the contractor's uh, policy as additional insured, and you have to say a dollar amount. I want a million dollars of coverage, and, and you have to state that they're gonna hold you harmless and identify you, and also cover your defense costs. All so that David, be written. David, so if the contractor just puts on their insurance certificate in the little box at the bottom that says named additional insured, if they list the association there, that's not enough? That's not enough. You have to, when you get the endorsement to the additional insured, it very specifically says it must be a written contract between you and the vendor to name them as additional insured, to name your association as additional insured. So have you seen cases where the vendor had named in the insurance certificate the association as an additional insured, but they didn't have that in writing as a separate legal document that the association didn't get covered by insurance? That is correct. Uh, they will not be named as additional insured. So what additional insured means is that you can open up a claim on that vendor's insurance policy without having to go through them or having to sue them to get that coverage so you can get indemnified and covered right away. But yes, I have seen it several times and uh, it's specifically in the endorsement of additional insured. So if you don't have that endorsement either, it may not have ever been added to the policy. It was just added to a certificate. A certificate of insurance is not a legal document. When you look at a certificate, it states right on there, this is not a legal document. That's why we get those copies of the endorsement of additional insured as well with a certificate. Okay, so 
that is going to cause a lot of people to to really scratch their heads because all along they've probably been taught that if it shows on the insurance certificate yeah. that they're covered. Yeah. So give us a couple of examples of uh, a vendor at the property has a accident and there's what it costs the association. And the, they can be with the uh, vendor, maybe they had insurance but they didn't have workers comp or yeah. maybe they chose a handyman who doesn't have any insurance. Yes, yeah. so, yes. Yeah. Give us a couple examples. I got two great examples for you. One of them is a landmark case here in California and it's case law now. And other states are using it as well because it's a landmark case where um, association hired a rain gutter cleaning company to replace some rain gutters. And everyone thinks a small job doesn't need to have proper insurance. This was a $1,200 job. Wow. So let's keep that in mind. And while the worker was pulling off the rain gutter, he hit a high power line and it fried him up pretty good. He's actually on life support now. And so his family sued to win for the injuries of, his, of her husband and they won an $18 million judgment. And a third of that went to the property manager, a third of it went to the association and a third of it went to the old company that the guy used to work for. They had no workers comp coverage and no contractor's license. And wow. so that's why whenever you hire someone without a contractor's license, you're gonna be deemed the employer of those people. And in that case, if say the association was self-managed, it would have been split 50-50. That is correct, that is correct. Yeah. That is right. Okay, what's this? That's, that's a, a very big case. And many, uh, you know, what association is going to have six or nine million dollars laying around to pay out for a claim? How do they finance that? Exactly. exactly. They've got to go out and get a. They small get a jobs loan. don't mean small claims. And that's all the unit owners, thing. all the unit owners are responsible to pay that because they're members of the association. So the association is not going to have that in reserves, or if they do, their reserves is wiped out or wiped out. And then secondly, they might have to do a uh, loan to pay that money and everybody's going to get increased monthly loan payments to, to yeah. cover that loss because they didn't have it covered by insurance. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah, those those uh, extra assessments is going to really devalue the property values for your homes then as well. Right. Okay. So that's a striking example. What's another one? Well, here's another one. Uh, this happened to one of our clients uh, that hired a new, that got a new client. It was a condo association in December. And in December, things are always a little crazy with all the parties and people coming over. So the manager didn't get an opportunity to, to go out to the new vendors and get their certificate. So in the middle of January, she uh, kept on bugging me about this guy who was replacing all the decks for the community. He, he really struggled on getting this stuff to us. And finally, we got all this information and found out he had a full exclusion in his general liability policy for work on condos. And we see this on about 20% of our certificates and liability policies that we review, either partial or full exclusions for work on condos. They're primarily put in there for um, construction defect, but still the, the underwriters just don't know what they're pulling and they're, this guy had a full exclusion. So if there, was a, if there was an accident and a claim, the association would not be covered at all? That's correct. And, and it doesn't matter if they're touching the building either. You could be 300 feet away from the building, someone trips over their ladder, breaks their shoulder. Since it was at a condo association, he would have no coverage whatsoever, neither would the additional insured. Wow. The other thing that happened on this, this is even better, is he had 18 people out there helping him. And I said, what about those 18 people out there helping you do this work on these decks? He says, they're not my employees, they're day laborers. I'm going, okay, well, they're your employees. I hate to tell you that. And um, within 24 hours, the board had him removed from the job, and they found out a little bit later that the work that he did do 
wasn't even to code. So they have to redo everything. And it was a million dollars worth of work that they had to pay twice for. This could have all been eliminated by properly vetting the vendor and he would have never gotten the job. Right. Um, I've got a blog post about how to, the right way to do a construction project, which I'll put a link to in the bottom of the notes of this video. Yeah. But give me another example if uh, somebody was on, you know, in their car, uh, a vendor was in the car, uh, they're on their way to the job and an accident happened. Uh, is, is the association covered if there's an accident or what has happened in those cases? Well, that's a good question, especially right now. Um, auto, commercial auto insurance rates are going way up and we're seeing a lot of mom and pop companies converting over to their personal auto policy. And their personal, if they're carrying around tools on their, their truck or in their car, and they drive on to the property of the association and get in a car wreck, there is no coverage on their personal automobile coverage. You have to have a commercial business auto policy to be covered if you're carrying around tools in your vehicle. So if they get an accident off the premise, no, the association is not gonna be responsible. But if they do get in an accident, which we have seen several times on the premise, then they need to have business auto coverage. We actually had a street sweeper not too long ago, had his hydraulic fluids leak all over the roads three weeks after they just got done slurring the street. And he caused over $150,000 in coverage or damage to the street that had to be re-slurred. Luckily, he had a business auto coverage on his policy and the association was able to collect off of that. Yeah, nobody wants to think about a car accident happening on the association grounds, but it can happen. Oh, I've seen a truck back into a, um, a main support beam in a, a condo association building and caused over $300,000 of damage. No. Yeah. Now, a case that often happens is associations will choose uh, a a small, as you called it, mom and pop handyman. Maybe it's a one person, you know, one guy in a truck kind of thing. Yes. Uh, that person says, I don't have insurance. I'm a sole proprietor. And here's a letter to that effect. Does that stand up as protecting the association or what is the association? What should the association be doing? Well, that the only thing that can clear them for if they have a contractor's license and they have no employees, they don't need to have workers comp. So they are, they can be waived for workers comp if they have a contractor's license. Mm -hmm. If you hire a handyman with no um, contractor's license and he were to get injured, you're going to be the employer and be responsible. So make sure you have a workers comp policy to cover them in case they do. Um, the not having general liability coverage is unacceptable for any reason because if they're working as an independent contractor, they need to be responsible for the bodily injury and property damage they were to cause. So, you know, oftentimes a vendor will say, well, I'm an inexpensive and yeah. so I'm not going to get insurance or, you know, uh, the board looks the other way, but it's a, it's a red flag and it really could could be risk for them. Yes, yes. I mean, just we talked about that example of the $1,200 rain gutter job. It cost them $18 million. So uh, small jobs don't mean small claims. Yeah, I've, I've been, you know, in my former life as a management company president, I had a uh, person who was up on a ladder, got stung by bees up on a ladder, fell off the ladder, and you know, was laid up for, had lots of medical bills, laid up for a long time, and it was just a huge claim. Yeah. And those, those types of things happen. It's just a freak accident and you can't control it. But what you can control is, you know, mitigating your risks. That's correct. So, so talking about mitigating risks, David, what, what does your, uh, oh, what does your, what does your uh, service do? And tell us a little bit about your service. Well, Association Services Network, which is our company, uh, we're insurance licensed. 
we have our own E&O coverage as well. So if we do make a mistake, uh, which we verify everybody goes through a three check process before they get compliant. Um, so we're gonna vet the vendors and the general liability coverage to make sure there's no exclusions for work on condos and condo conversions uh, and multi-unit buildings. So we'll make sure that is there. We'll also make sure the association's name is additional insured and we'll get a written agreement to ratify that additional insured agreement too. Continue to get your contracts and, and name, have them uh, required for that uh, additional insured as well. So we, we've got a double uh, whammy to cover ourselves for ratifying that additional insured agreement. We also vet the auto insurance and the workers comp coverage. We get a W-9 for you and a bunch of information about that vendor so you can know more about them when you're doing your R, um, RFPs when you're looking for somebody. So this doesn't cost the association anything, right? That is correct, that is correct. So this would be the association, let's say the association has 10 vendors. Yes. And they wanna make sure that they're managing their risk properly. They don't want any of these scenarios that we've talked about earlier to happen at their association. They would just tell their vendors, hey, listen, we're, uh, we're using this new company, ASN. They're going to ask you some questions and make sure that you're in compliance with our governing documents and our business judgment as a board. And so the vendor comes to you, then you go through all their documents with them, and yeah. they, the vendor can either say, yes, we're, we're going to make changes and adjustments so we can continue to work with the association, or no, it's, you know, we don't want to get more insurance. And then the association can say, okay, well, we'll find somebody who does. And is that how it works? And they pay, the vendor pays a fee to you guys so that you can check them out. Yeah, we charge a very small fee based on the services that we're providing for the association or management company, uh, anywhere from free to a small fee of $25. And depending, um, we could even go up to even more. We charge sometimes $99. It all based on the services that the association wants us to do. Okay. Um, and that covers them for, if it's a management company, all the communities that they manage as well. Most of the time it'll be a smaller fee. Um, so we get all that we, and we ratify all the endorsements with a written agreement as well with that vendor. And that's a one-time fee that the vendor pays and then they go on and do whatever there is they're doing. Yeah, we do it every year. But we, uh, we, we charge them uh, once a year on their subscription renewal. And, uh, but we monitor it all year long. We're gonna check the license all year long, their insurance, may, their auto policy may renew in June and their workers' comp renews in August and their general liability renews in January. We're right. always updating that in the system for them. Well, I think it's an awesome service and I'm a big fan because, uh, you know, even running a management business, you have, uh, you know, you're told that you need to get the, the vendor to have coverage and that they, you're looking for workers comp and you're looking for that additional insured, but we're not insurance experts. Yeah. And I can, yeah, I can see, you know, from our conversations gaps that uh, happened, you know, not, uh, you know, for any, uh, you know, meaningful neglect or anything, just because we don't know we're not insurance experts as, as managers. So I think it's 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 an awesome service. I think um, you know if a vendor is unwilling to go through that for a community, it's just not worth the risk. There's there's too much money on the line. Uh, when you go to court, you never know you know what the outcome is going to be. Yes, you know when they when those vendors step foot onto the association's property. If you're over 20 units, you got a multi-million dollar association that is at risk. And with property values gone up like they have over the years, and they'll continue to do that, there's a big risk. We're not in, we're not a mom and pop shop here. The board is running a multi-million dollar business. Right. And they need to do what businesses do, and that's vet their vendors. And the board has the responsibility the fiduciary responsibility to to protect the assets of the association yeah. and we already talked about an instance where you know one if you get 
an accident like this and you don't have the proper insurance, your reserves get wiped out as a minimum. Two, you have to do a huge special assessment or an ongoing basis with a loan to pay for any shortfall, and that has a negative impact on property values. So better to spend a little bit more on insurance, or in this case, you're not even spending more on insurance, you're just guiding a, a vendor to, to have to do that in order to do business with you. But I would say that the vendor is going to have the, uh, you know, if they have this kind of coverage, they're doing a good job for communities. It'll be an enhancement for them to sell to their others, to other, uh, you know, prospective clients. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All right, David. Well, thank you very much for sharing with us. How could, how could people learn more about you? I guess we'll get a, a link to Association Services Network. We can put in the, the, the bottom of this video here but we can just tell them online what the uh, URL is. Well, our URL is ASN, the number four, HOA.com. All right. And our phone number is 877-404-2008. Terrific. Well, I, I think, again, I can't uh, stress how important this is. If you're using vendors on the property, you want to make sure you have risk, uh, uh, you know, you're taking care of potential risks at the property. So you're doing risk management. And this is a, seems to be a no-brainer where the association turns to an expert to vet the, the, uh, the vendors and then they're covered. You know, there's one thing in tracking uh, expiration dates of insurance, which is you know, important, right? Because if the insurance expired and the vendor's doing work the next week at the association, the associate, there's no coverage if there's an accident. That's right, right? Yes, that's correct. So, so as, as managers and, you know, boards, we typically will look for the expiration dates, which is the easiest thing. But it's all these other small things, these nuances with additional written forms, exclusions in contracts that board members and managers are not going to be you know up to date on or know what or even have the time to look for it. so i think it's just uh, super important that's right that's right it's, it's all about the terms condition of the policy of those vendors and we read those terms for you all right well uh you've done an awesome job explaining vendor and contractor insurance why it's important to boards the pitfalls and potential risks and how they can avoid it and uh, that, and I, I wanna thank you for, uh, for sharing your wisdom with our audience. And that wraps up today's Ask an Expert video. Uh, keep an eye out for new videos on our YouTube channel and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this and see, or see the resources page of communityfinancials.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Russell. Take care.